variables. They just go into your V, capital V, set of uh, variables. Now if K is 2, a bit of a special case, um, now if K is 2, uh, we create a new variable UI and add the rule uh, that uh, UI is little u i. Okay, so, all right, well now uh, I'll switch around. <clears throat> now, uh, quite a few details in that pros procedure. I hope you, uh, hope you followed it. Um, you know, you need to practice it a bit. Now let's, now let's actually do an example. Uh, we'll be given a, a grammar, which is here. Now remember, uh, couple mentioned a few times in the past, um, typically, uh, I mean a grammar, strictly speaking, its formal definition is a four-tuple. Right? It's a, a list of four things, uh, V, capital Sigma, uh, capital R, and the start variable. But uh, if you're given the rule set R, you can deduce readily the other three. So typically, often a grammar will just be specified by its rule set. And that's it. The other, the other three things you can uh, extract from those rules. So that, that's what's given here. You know, you, you're given a grammar called G6, G for grammar. Six is our sixth, sixth example of a grammar. And here, here are its rules. It's substitution rules. And we don't, we don't even say substitution anymore. Just, you know, in the context of grammars, we just tend to talk about rules. Okay. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six rules in this grammar. Right? So we're going to do an example now in the text uh, 2.1, chapter 2, the tenth thing in, in the chapter. Uh, now, we're asked to convert this grammar convert it into CNF, into that form, the standard form, uh, the Chomsky normal form. In other words, the right-hand side, uh, either two variables or one terminal. Very, very simple. And all the rules are uh, in that form. And you can imagine, you know, when it comes to writing uh, computer code, computer software, to handle such a grammar, having the grammar written in such a simple form, makes life a lot easier for the programmer, okay? like compiler, writer, and so forth. Okay, so let's now do it. Right. Um, so the grammars that, that will appear uh, for this, this square and the next, pretty much, uh, we will progressively go through the steps, you know, one, two, three, four, and it, each time, each step, we'll write out the, the progressively um, the, the grammar that results from the changes we made at, you know, at each step. Right. Now, uh, a couple of conventions. Um, if I underline a rule, like, like this double wiggly line like this, and so if I'm underlining a rule with these double wiggly lines, that means they, that indicates that those rules have just been added. Okay? Um, they're repairing the damage that you do by throwing out rules. Now the rules that have been thrown out, uh, I just cross like this, like, like you know, crossed off, you know, removed. Okay? So that, sh that should be fairly clear. All right? So rules that are freshly added, put a double um, line under them, you know, just, just, to, just to help you. Uh, so you can see what's what. And those rules that have just been removed, uh, you yeah, cross them out like this. Okay, here's, here's the grammar that you start with, and you're asked to convert this grammar, in other words, these rules, or the other way around actually, <laughs> into, a, into CNF, um, Chomsky normal form. Okay? So, uh, one, two, three, 3B, well, there's two parts to. Uh, to three and we can't see it, but um, 
step four uh, on the, in the next session. Okay, so step one, which is what? Uh, just add, that's probably the easiest, uh, just simply add a new start variable uh, to, to your new grammar, to, to the V of your new grammar. Okay? So, uh, call it S0 as usual, uh, arrow S, and S is uh, the start variable of your old grammar. In other words, here is the start variable of the old grammar. Here's the old grammar. Okay? And interestingly, look, we're going to ask here on the right hand side of the old grammar. Okay, so, uh, so the new grammar, the modified grammar, it'll be, you know, we've added that rule to it, okay? And the other rules unchanged, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Yeah. Okay. So you just you just add uh, that new rule to the set of rules of the old grammar. So here they are, plus this new one. And 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 and, and uh, uh, we haven't written it, but uh, v uh, v v is uh, the old set of variables of the old grammar. You would add s naught to it. Okay, uh, that, that's not written written here, but but you you know you have to do that. Okay, so step one is create a new variable, put it in uh, big V, and add a rule. This rule, uh, new start state arrow old start state, uh, start variable, new start variable arrow old start variable. Okay, so that's step one done. All right, now step two is. Uh, we remove the eater rules. Um, so we, we remove all those rules that have it as a right hand side the empty string. And then after that we'll remove the rules that have a single uh, variable. <coughs> we, w we won't remove the rules that have a single terminal on the right hand side. Uh, that's fine. That's compatible, right? Remember, that's compatible with CNF. Okay, so there's a certain logic. Yeah, it makes sense as you get into it more. All right. <coughs> okay. Now, step two: remove the eater rules. Now, now things get a bit more complicated. Uh, now, here, here, here is the grammar we have. Our, our current grammar. Right, that we have at the moment. Now, now we're doing step two. Now have a look, have a look at this grammar, like these rules here, and go looking for epsilon rules. Can you see any? There's one. B arrow epsilon. Epsilon. So, uh, so we eliminate the arrow epsilon. We eliminate that. So here, here. Uh, and then we go, and then we go looking for all the instances of uh, B on the right hand side and uh, and we put an epsilon where the B's were okay well, here's, here's, here's a B on the right hand side so if we eliminate it we just get the empty string so then we get A arrow epsilon but that's also the form that's also a uh, an epsilon rule okay so we want to get rid of that as well so you just keep looping till you've got got rid of all the epsilon rules, right? Now here, you know, can't do anything. Oh wait a minute, here's a b. Okay, so you eliminate that. So then you'd have a epsilon, which is just a, right? So you'll add a rule s arrow a. So you've added that rule s arrow a. There it is. There double li double lined, underlined, double. Okay. So uh, that one. Um, 
Now here's your a, a arrow epsilon that, that we got from where? Now you go looking, uh, let's go through it again. So look, you know, look, look, at, look here and look for a, an epsilon rule. Well here's one, b arrow epsilon. Okay, then so uh, kill, kill the b arrow e which is here. You've killed that. Right? You've killed that rule. I mean, here's like, you know, it was two rules, but we killed that rule. So, so just left with B arrow little b. Okay. Uh, and then go looking for, uh, on the right hand side of the other rules, go looking for occurrences of wh where you have big B. Well, there's one, A arrow B, and here's another one, S arrow little a b. So I've got two, two occurrences. Now, when there's a B, um, Put an epsilon there, you know, kill the B. So here you just 